Hey there, movie fans. Welcome to For Your Consideration for Collider. Every week, we track the ups and downs of award season leading up to and including the Academy Awards, which happen in just less than two weeks on February 9th. That means this is our third to the last episode for season two of Collider FYC. But we would not be here if not for our partners, our amazing partners at Arc Light Cinemas. They have been our partner not only for season two, but they have been a great champion for our Collider screening series at the Arc Light Cinemas in Hollywood. And if things look a little different right now, and not just because we're sitting in different places, at least Jeff and I are, but because we are live, well, not live, but we are at the Sundance Film Festival, Sundance 2020, from the Kia Supper Suite. Joining me, as always, Collider FIC would not be anything if not for the amazing Perry Nemiroff, otherwise known as Perry Normal I was Activity. hoping you would bring that up. And also, the mighty Jeff Snyder, also known as, you know, Jeff Snyder. And uh, it is great to be here at Sundance at the Kia Supper Suite. And while we were here watching a whole lot of movies and doing you, especially doing tons and tons of interviews for, here for Collider Video, a whole lot of award stuff happened over the weekend. And we're going to talk about how those awards wins may or may not affect the outcome of the Oscars on February 9th. So let's get right to it with the biggie. The Directors Guild Award. The DGA went to Sam Mendes for 1917. First feature went to Emma Harrell for Honey Boy. Now, since 1950, the DGA winner went on to win Best Director at the Academy Awards all but seven years. So 90% of the time. But wait, there's more. There's more. Uh, uh, the DGA winner won Best Picture in all but 16 times. So that's 76%. So the question is, now that we have the PGA winner for 1972, 1917, a movie that was 103 years in the making, and the Directors Guild going to Sam Mendes, how are we looking for Best Picture and Best Director at the Academy Awards Perry? This is so stressful because part of me still wants to say it's coming down to still both 1917 and Parasite. And I think we're only going to be able to predict one category based on what happens in all the others. I do think that, you know, Bong Joon-ho might get director, 1917 Best Picture, or vice versa. But I don't know, between PGA and now DGA, there's a lot going in 1917's favor that I might be teetering in that direction for both categories. Yeah, yeah. Because then Parasite can still win Best International Feature. So I think I'm going that way right now, 1917 but, but for the, the big ones. Parasite deserves, it deserves so much more than just Best International Feature. Does it? Yes, it does, mister. Okay, does Jeff, I'm I with him on this one. Your take on this. Let's hear it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Let's go. <laughs> I don't think anything has really changed. I think that 1917 is going to win Best Director, um, which is what I've been saying for weeks. They just, yeah, yeah. It, you know, it's like, it's just like Alfonso Cuaron with gravity. They just, they gravitate towards spectacle. And 1917 is the movie with the most spectacle. And Sam Mendes, I think, is a pretty good bet for D, for the DGA. Now, now uh, according to all these uh, you know stats all these all these different things you know in recent years the following films won the Golden Globe and the PGA and the DGA for best picture The Artist, Argo and Birdman. Now, uh, you know, you have other films that won the PGA, the Golden Globe, and the DGA that did not go on to win Best Picture, like La La Land. So, like, all these stats, I mean, nobody's perfect. I mean, even, you know, the 90% track record for the DGA to predict the Best Director Oscar, 90% is a pretty good track record, but it's not perfect, which is why, you know, I'm, I'm so conflicted because, you know, if you look at the numbers, if you look at the stats, and I did like 1917 a lot, then yeah, sure. You know, 1917 for best picture and Sam for best director. What do you got? It, it has it has the momentum right now, and it's because it was the last film released, right? And so there hasn't, with the abbreviated schedule, there hasn't been any time to really formulate a backlash. I don't even know necessarily what the backlash would be. What would it be <laughs> in, in, in this particular case? Um, but it, I'm sticking with my earlier prediction that something crazy is going to happen. I just think it's way too easy to set to chalk this up to a race between 1917 and Parasite. I don't. I think that the preferential ballot is could just blow all of that up. Oh what? no, I don't. I don't think that's the case. I think we're definitely down to those two for the big ones. I what? like. I can't imagine any of the others at this point sneaking in. I wouldn't mind seeing a Jojo Rabbit benefit from the yeah. uh, preferential ballot, but 
I think there's too much momentum behind both 1917 and Parasite, and we're just seeing too much love from the community for Parasite in particular. So I think if anything steals it from 1917, that's really the only possibility. I, I agree with Perry, and also, you know, if I vote, if I think with my head, then sure, I'm looking at like, wow, everyone's really picking 1917 here. Then, then thinking that way, I would also go with 1917. If I think with my heart. The movie that I really truly love here is Parasite for Best Picture and Best Director. And you know what? I'm going to stick with my heart for this one. And I'm going, I am, I pride myself on being a non conformist. I am sticking with Best Director Bong Joon Ho, okay. Best Picture Parasite. Go Parasite. Parasite is not going to win Best Picture, Scott. I don't know what to tell you. Okay. Well, well, it's winning Best International Feature. You're not, it's not going to get two picture Oscars. But. But think, think of okay. Think about it this way. Think about it this way. So last year, everyone was up in arms. There has not been a backlash against the Academy for a Best Picture winner since Crash won for 2005. But the backlash against the Academy for Green Book might be such that here the they actually have a chance to to make history. For the film that is worthy, worthy, that's the key here. Parasite is worthy of a Best Picture mm -hmm. win. And if Roma last year can go as far as it did, being the kind of movie that it was, which was a movie that required a lot of commitment because it was kind of a very, very slow burn. You know, Parasite is such a potent movie that actually has something to say. It's a movie for the here and now. It's a brilliant film. It's a friggin' masterpiece. And that's why I'm sticking with Parasite. It is something picture. to say, and it's wild, wildly Wait. entertaining. And when you look at so many of the other movies... <laughs> what? No, no, I don't want to interrupt oh. your yeah. um, mm. But, I, I mean, I have to go back to preferential ballot for this one because I do think that the top two on many of the ballots are going to be 1917 and Parasite. There's there's little to no criticism on those compared to some of the other things in the mix. I just think that they've made the most noise thus far. Wait, you guys are crazy. You, little to well, no criticism about Parasite? You're wrong. <laughs> You're just, that's a fact. You're wrong. In, in the voting community. I know you didn't like it as much as most. But most did. Right. No, I, and this I is do. Why, this I is why do Jeff think, is an answer. And so wait. And you especially, just, especially when you compare the criticism of Parasite to the amount of criticism we've seen of some of the other films. They're much more divisive. Therefore, what film had the most criticism last year? Let me ask you. What film? Green Book. Did it win Best how, Picture? How, yes. How are we even oh. quantifying? <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. But to Scott, you just said you think Bong's going to win Best Director. Yep. And you think Parasite's going to win Best picture. Yes. And you think it's gonna win best international feature? Well, of course. So you're just you're just going all in on Parasite. I, I'm all in. I would bet you any amount of money it's all not right, gonna go bucks. win all three of those awards. That's that's a dangerous bet to make. I I, all I three. stand by my all bet. three uh, of Jeff, those awards. Jeff, hang on a second. That's here. never happening. Hang on a second. Right here. Here, see, here we go. Oh, here no. it is. All right three here. awards. Hang on. So if you win two of the three, you should be I, I get a the much bet. higher bet right now. No, 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 no. If all three movies win, if all three categories, yes. okay, 20 bucks. Deal. Deal. This $20 right here, Jeff, it has your name Put on it, it. If Parasite wins Best International Feature and, well, no, no, no. If it wins Best International Feature, Best Picture, and Best Director, you owe me 20 bucks. Deal. If yes. it loses, wait, if it loses Best Picture or Best Director, it's yours. All right? Yes. Fair you enough? Perry? Deal. All right, here, you're hold you're that. in so much trouble. I right just now. I care. This is that's a bad I, bet. I'm with you that I think Parasite could get Best Director or Best Picture in addition to Best uh, International Feature, but, but it's not, not going to be all three. Uh, you know what? I'm just I, I just what has I happened? I'm crazy here, but come on. Oh, we got to move on. We got jo a lot of awards Joker. <laughs> Joker got 11 nominations. Right, you can't just discount it. Movie. You can't discount Jojo Rabbit. You don't know what it came in second place at the DGA. You don't you don't know. Any of these other factors, I just well, I don't it's know. A, it's a fair what? point, but we're making predictions based on the information yeah, we do and have. And you're and right. I, and I think most signs runner. point at those two. 1917 is the front runner, and if I was filling out a ballot to try to get you know the, the highest percentage, I would put 1917. Mm. Well, Parasite is also a front runner, and I'm sticking prediction. with that as well. And this is what the show is all okay. about. All right, moving on to the American Society of Cinematographers. The winner of that, I mean, no question here, uh, uh, no problem here with this one. Yeah. Roger Deakins for 1917. Last year, interestingly, Cold War won the American Society mm -hmm. of Cinematography, but the uh, 
directing Oscar for cinematography went to Roma. And in the last 33 years, only 14 ASC winners went on to win the Best Cinematography Oscar. But I think uh, Roger Deakins is definitely looking at his second Academy Award after Blade Runner 2049. This would be the ultimate upset if it didn't pan out this way on the big night. I think it's going to happen no matter what. Jeff? I, I agree. I think Deakins is a lock. Yeah, right? Cinematography, yeah. I mean, no one deserves it There's more. Just, what, what else was, what is the second contender? You know, like, what is the one that's nipping at his heels? Uh, that's a great question. I mean, Joker was nominated. Yeah, I would say. And Joker was really, you know, was shot very well, and so was Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. But none of these movies are really, at a, in terms of uh, cinematography, yeah. at that level. I agree. I mean, for, for Deakins to win the Academy Award for Blade Runner 20, 2049, which, uh, 49, he was worthy. I mean, he deserved it. Uh, but then, then you see this one, and I was like, oh, well, that. I agree. That's even, in terms of cinematography. Mm -hmm. This better. is a bigger accomplishment. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Next, we had the Cinema Audio Society. That's the, uh, the awards for sound mixing. The winner for that went to, I'm very happy mm -hmm. to say, a movie that I loved to pieces, Ford versus Ferrari. Last year, sound mixer Paul Massey won Best Sound Mixing, among other people, for Bohemian Rhapsody. And Paul Massey is one of the sound mixers for Ford versus Ferrari. So, uh, uh, But interestingly, in six of the last 10 years, the CAS winner won the Oscar for Best Sound Mixing. So, uh, I, But I think that uh, the Ford versus Ferrari sound mixing, that to me is a front runner for the Oscar, Perry. Yeah, I'm up there at the top with Ford v. Ferrari and mixing with my number two being 1917, but this win just kind of reinforces how I already felt. Jeff? Um, it's a tough call. I mean, I love the sound in Ford versus Ferrari. I, you know, the, the, the vroom vroom of those cars and everything. Mm -hmm. But it's just those racing scenes, really, that where the sound you know, stands out. 1917 sound goes, you know, throughout the whole movie. I don't know. I think I might lean towards 1917 just uh, because of the support within the entire Academy for that movie. Well, the reason I'm sticking with Ford Ferrari on this one, not just because of the one here, but as, as soon as I saw Ford vs. Ferrari, I'm like, I was blown away by the sound of that movie. And it's, first of all, the racing scenes take up the last 40 minutes of the film, but also you have the scenes where they're testing out the different cars. So it's prevalent throughout the course of the movie. It's not just in the last mm -hmm. 30 or 40 minutes of the film. Perry. Is it not, was it not even nominated? What? Uh, 1917? 1917 wasn't even nominated wasn't. for best, uh, <laughs> for best, best sound? sound. Yeah. Mixing. Interesting. Um, Interesting. I mean, but it, but it is up for um, the Oscar. At the, the Cinema Audio Society Awards. C right, I mean, right. not, not Academy, obviously. Okay. So, all right. Moving on then to the Goya well, Awards. Well, oh, real wait, quick, real on, quick. With the sound on. stuff. I feel like Academy members, they have no idea what, what, they're, they're, what they're checking off, right? Like, they don't know the difference between mixing and editing. Right. Most sound mixing and sound editing, they don't know what the difference is. And that's is. why I think they're just going to kind of absentmindedly go with, you know, the 1917, which is this season's awards juggernaut, so to speak. Uh, Ford vs. Ferrari I, seems... I hate to admit it, but I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case. Yeah, it just seems like a mindless thing. Yeah, you, you do. I don't uh, know. And it's like the mindless thing might wind up being like, oh, well, if I give sound editing to 1917, I'll give mixing to Ford v. Ferrari, and nobody it, knows yeah. the difference between one or the other. Well, you know, do you have, Mr. St statistic, do you have stats on that, like how many times, um, you know, in the last five years or so? Both. Right, something takes both, or those awards are split. Do you have any idea? Well, oh, oh, for both of those for, awards, for the sound, no, just no. for sound okay. mixing. I, I didn't mean to put you on the spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, for sound mixing, six of the last ten years, the Cinema Audio Society winner went on to win the uh, uh, Oscar for Best Sound Mixing. But for mixing and editing, I mean, uh, have, oh. have movies of late been winning both of them, or I'm have at, they been splits? Last I'm at least year. trying to, to find question. what won. Uh, well, well, last last year, Bohemian Rhapsody won both. Right. Right, right, but it doesn't always win both. Okay. Right. I, mean, I was I, just like, curious. When I'm if doing you knew. my Oscar ballot, I, I really don't know enough about the difference, and I wind up picking the same movie for both, thinking that it'll at least win one of them. The <laughs> year, the year before, Dunkirk won both. Yeah. I mean, actually, that's probably a good, a good example of why 1917 might be the front runner in both categories too. Well, there you go. That's, good. Good that's point. a good race. That's, that's why you two have your computers and I don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on to the Goya Awards. This is the Spanish Academy Awards. Pain and Glory, Clean Sweep, 1-7. It was nominated for 16 
Goya Awards, and it won seven of them. Picture, director, actor for Antonio Banderas, original screenplay, editing, original music, supporting actress for Julieta Serrano. And uh, I, I mean, I think this is a beautiful film. It's nominated for two Academy Awards for international feature and best actor for Antonio Banderas. But otherwise, I don't think that these awards are going to have uh, an, enough of an impact to, to win anything really at the Oscars. Jeff, what do you think? The Goya Awards? Head. The 16 nominations? Could a movie even get 16 nominations at the Academy? I well, just... the only movies that have what nominated for 14 that I know of off the top of my head were Titanic and La La Land. But, but could those movies have gotten 16 somehow? Uh, I don't know if are, they could Are there have. even 16 I don't know. you could be I, I, eligible in? You know. I don't even know, but uh, yeah, the Goyas have no bearing on this race. But I will say that, that Antonio Banderas in Pain and Glory, it's, it's the performance of his career yeah. for sure. And one thing uh, that... Uh, Pedro Almaldivar, the writer-director for Pain and Glory, did say at the Goya Awards is that Penelope Cruz will be handing out the Oscar for Best International Feature at the Oscars. So that's kind of cool. All right, moving on to the 47th. Well, well, then it's definitely not going to Pain and Glory. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know how that works. Yeah, uh, Maybe it will. Maybe... Maybe, you crazy kids, maybe Pain and Glory wins Best International Feature, wow. and maybe Parasite wins Best Picture and Best Director. Well, you want to so, put yeah, another exactly. 20 I am not on the line? I'll take that so one. No, <laughs> no way. <laughs> that I would be not, crazy if you know. that was the category that cost you that bet. Can you imagine? Actually, holy moly. <laughs> one picture I and director almost want to see this happen just because of the shock value of it. That Listen, you know, that – would do, be amazing. Do you think that, the, just for if you humor me, do you think that Pain and Glory is sort of the second international Absolutely. feature? Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. If 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 Parasite wasn't in this category for international feature, the winner would, I, no question about it, it would be hands no down. No question about no it. No question okay. about it. It would be hands down Pain and Glory, which is why, I mean, but the, but the question is, will enough Academy voters think that to the extent that, okay, well, I'll vote for Pain and Glory for International so I can vote for Parasite no. for the big one. Because last year, I actually felt like a Cold War would win International Feature or Best uh, Foreign Film, as it was called last year, and Best Picture would go to Roma. I thought that that scenario could happen, but mm -hmm. it didn't. And if that didn't happen last year, I don't think it's going to happen this year. Yeah. But like you said, Perry, if that happens, that shakeup would be fan-freaking-tastic. All right. The 47th Annual Annie Awards for Animated Features. Uh, wow, Klaus won seven Annie Awards. Otherwise, uh, you could say that it won all seven Annie Awards it was nominated for, including Best Animated Feature over the likes of Toy Story 4, How to Train Your Dragon 3, Frozen 2. Those three movies grossed to combine $3 billion worldwide, and Best Animated Feature went to a Netflix movie. How do you like them apples, Jeff? Uh, I love those apples. This is what I've been saying for a while, uh, that you got to keep an eye on the, the Netflix movies. Um, now, Klaus beat all those films, but what film didn't it beat? Didn't beat How I, uh, I Lost My Body. Yep. Which was in a separate category competing against four films I've never heard of. Another Netflix film. Yeah. So I think that this is a race between both of the Netflix movies, and I think that I Lost My Body is going to win. Well, well uh, yeah, wow. Okay. Well, That's the, a big the, swing. The uh, three Netflix movies won uh, a total of 19 Annie Awards, including Klaus, I Lost My Body, and Love, Death, and Robots. So no question that Netflix clearly dominated the, the Annie Awards. And uh, uh, let's see, uh, since 2002, when the uh, Best Animated Feature first was, uh, was introduced to the Oscars and it went to Shrek, 13 out of 18 Annie winners went on to win Best Animated Feature at the Academy Awards, the most recent of which was uh, but, Into the Spider-Verse. But this throws it off because I lost my body is in a separate I agree. category. I agree. So it's and, 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 you know, I've, I've been uh, you know, on Toy Story 4 from, since I saw the film. I love the movie. It's but great. Yeah, there's clearly a lot of contenders here. I don't Perry. think the I lost my body uh, win here helps it at all. I think it's... If anything, at this point, I think this race is probably down to Toy Story 4 and Klaus, with Klaus being the underdog where this win right here tips the scale for me a little bit. I think they're, I don't know, I think we're going to see them embracing maybe a non-Disney film. I'm taking that non-nomination for Frozen Ooh. 2 very seriously right now. And 
I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if Klaus ran away with this. But another reason why I would cross I lost my body off the list is just, you know, view time. How many how many of these movies have people seen? Klaus got a whole lot of love when it came out during the holiday season. You already brought up how much money Toy Story 4 made. And also, this might be my personal preference now. I am rooting so hard for Klaus. Did that you is, see it? It is stunning the animation is it's just got like such a fresh feel that so well suits that story and it might be one of the most clever christmas tales i think i've seen in Since, recent uh, years uh, uh, uh. Nightmare Before it's, Christmas. You know how much I love I that, love movie. that movie. <laughs> but, but Klaus and the way that they handle that mythology is so clever. It's got a great message. It's so heartwarming. Wow. And Jeez, I was really, right I was about really blown away is by it. about it. Santa Claus? Kind of, yeah. I don't think Santa Claus no. is winning an Oscar. You, you, <laughs> I am telling you, though, until you watch it and you see what they do with that story, you don't know. I, I right, highly sure. recommend it. Uh, I see. The other thing, Perry, to point out, with regards to sort of this, uh, uh, I don't want to say anti Disney Disney sentiment, but you know, Toy Story, uh, For Frozen Two was not nominated yeah. for Best Animated Feature, but Toy Story Three did win Best Animated mm -hmm. Feature for 2010, and Toy Story Three was also nominated for Best Picture. So because a Toy Story already did win the uh, an Academy Award mm -hmm. for Best International Feature, maybe the Academy will think, okay, let's let's go with something else, and that could indeed be Klaus. Yeah, no, I mean that that could. I don't want to say that's not possible, not a not possible way of thinking for anybody in the academy. But I don't know. Just initially, my knee jerk reaction to that is my mind wouldn't go down. Like right. I'm not going to sit there and look up which Toy Story movie won something and take award an award away from it for that reason. But you know, I also don't want to say Toy Story Four isn't deserving of this. I really do think that that was a phenomenal sequel to add to that series. So yeah. one way or the other, I'm going to be thrilled. Well, Jeff, any parting I'm, thoughts here? I'm, I'm sticking with my, my prediction. Hmm. Well, since we are at the Sundance Film Festival, I just thought it might be kind of fun to like uh, start talking about the Academy Awards for 2021. And maybe one of us or two of us or all of us have seen a performance or a film that could actually be a contender when the Academy Award nominations for 2021 are announced in a year. Perry, anything off the top so of your head? So I'm yes. going to pass this on to Jeff first, not for the Academy, for something else, because I love, love, loved what you said to me last night. Uh-oh. Ooh. About what? What'd you say? <laughs> we saw Downhill. Oh. Okay, my, well, my first awards prediction of the year would be that I think Julia Louis-Dreyfus can get a uh, Best Actress Golden Globe nomination. Okay. Not uh, an Oscar nomination, yeah. but I think that but she very could very this. well be a contender for the Globes. And I know why you're saying that, because there is a scene in the film, not going to spoil it, there's a scene in the movie where, I'll, I'll tell you off camera, but there's We've a scene in the it. film, but they, they didn't. Seen it. So there's, in force majeure. But, but there is a scene in the film where I literally was watching the scene going, this is her for your consideration clip. If it ever came down to that. I think she has a few think, of them. Yeah, I was going to say there's definitely more than one there. But but there was one. Well, I'll tell you the first one that, that I really went, wow, she's really crushing it. This is why she has a million Emmys. Well, I, that's that's the other thing. It's not just about what we're seeing on screen. It's the fact that she is who she is. Yeah. Right. Was okay, like, you know. fair enough. She's uh, very, very good in that movie. What else? And when you, Did, look, you, when you look at the, the – I mean, I have to – maybe take a closer look at the, the landscape and what comedies or musicals are coming out this year but well what what else is what else are you thinking perry nothing okay. nothing really all right i've yeah. got one it got it wow it really like hurt to say that just now not I, that i didn't but just to clarify that. not that i didn't like anything i i've seen a lot of movies that i liked a lot but especially given how things have gone in past years especially with the farewell not cracking the awards race race whatsoever mm. with the farewell not getting in and that's so fresh in my mind right yeah, now yeah, yeah. like i just can't place a bet on anything i've seen because i don't think anything <clears throat> i've seen has been better than the farewell well, not I don't yet think, at least I, I wouldn't place a like a bet like i just did bye bye 20 bucks <laughs> <laughs> um, but I love how this is where you draw the line on <laughs> bet making. <laughs> yeah, well, right. I mean, like, I, I don't know. I'm really, really thinking with my heart on Parasite. And mm -hmm. I, man, if I, if, I'm just saying, if Parasite wins and I win 20 bucks from you again, I, uh, it's going to be off the hook. Like, I, it's going to be off the hook. I mean, I'll I never am, top uh, not gonna Olivia Coleman beating Glenn Close. But <laughs> yeah, <okay. laughs> right, right. But two, two movies, or at least a, a movie and a performance that really stood out to me is a potential Oscar nominee is uh, Carrie Mulligan 
for Promising Young Woman. She's already an Oscar nominee for An Education, which I believe premiered at Sundance in 2009. Someone will fact check me on that. That'd be awesome. But Carrie Mulligan was so damn good in Promising Young Woman. Such a complex, tortured, uh, damaged, driven, loyal character it was so many complexities to that performance in a movie that was a genre bending rom-com meets psychological thriller uh i just love the film and i thought that she absolutely crushed it the uh, and you saw it what do you i mean am oh, i, I, th- I think she no i think she's excellent in it and at this point in time just a month into the year <laughs> if i had to put someone at the top of my list given what i've seen it would be her I'm just very curious. I loved the movie, but I am very curious to see what the overall response to it when it comes out, because, you know, that's that's a thinker. I didn't walk out of that movie and tweet. I slept on it. I was a little overwhelmed by it. And I'm curious to see how the conversation goes from here on out. Jeff, I thought she was great. I don't know if it's an awards friendly movie. Um, and that goes with all the performances that I've seen this, like so far at Sundance. Like Rebecca Hall's terrific so in the Night House, and it just got a Searchlight deal. So like they know what they're doing, obviously in terms of awards. Um, but yeah, I just don't think that that's an awards movie. And, well, and same with Amy Ryan and Lost Girls. Like she's great in that. But well, one one other film that I I, I really do think. If it gets picked up by the right distributor, whether it's a theatrical distributor or a Netflix or an Amazon, and they release it at the right time and it doesn't get buried or just dumped on a streamer and like the report, uh, which which was a good movie from last year, but just did nothing. Mm -hmm. I really liked Worth. I was going to ask you about that. Do you think Michael Keaton has a chance? I think Michael Keaton. Okay, so so Worth is about uh, Kenneth Feinberg, who created the 9-11 Victims Compensation Fund. Uh, to uh, uh, give compensation to families who lost loved ones in 9-11 and people who uh, were hurt. And I know I didn't know a whole lot about the process that it took, but if you take a movie like Spotlight, which I sort of compared this to not because of Michael Keaton, or a movie like The Report, which this movie is superior to, mm-hmm. because I felt like The Report got bogged down in the details, and Worth doesn't. I was not... Like I was able to follow it really easily. I feel like I have a whole better understanding of the 9-11 co- Victims Compensation Fund. And I also, watching the film, felt like it took me back to that time. It took me back to the feeling of 9-11. When that happened, I, I was sitting there shaking my head in the beginning of the film like, wow, like, wow. You know, so... But I think that Michael Keaton is worthy of a best actor. Stanley mm. Tucci, worthy, worthy, I'm saying, mm. okay, best supporting actor. I think the picture is worthy. The screenplay is worthy. I think it's a superb film. But as we know, timing is everything. Mm-hmm. This has to be released in the fourth quarter. Uh, in terms of possible Oscar contenders and a movie that's actually worthy, I think that worth is worthy of a, being an awards contender. All right, now, now you're you're making me a little bummed that I missed the screening the <laughs> other day. I'm gonna I'm gonna Harry. kick it up on the. Then again, I this time last year I was running around like crazy trying to get a ticket to the report. <laughs> and, uh, right, and what happened to that one? I, right. Like I thought I wasn't able to get a ticket because everyone was so confident in its chances going all the way, and it yeah. came yeah. and well, went. It came and went. Did Ben Zeitlin get an, uh, an original score nomination for Beasts of the Southern Wild? Him and Dan huh. Romer. That is a because very that good Wendy call. score I've heard is, is okay. very good. I'm just thinking. Like outside of the box, outside of the acting nominees, just some other below the line things that could be contenders next year. Well, you know, uh, I think we still have some more movies to see. Yeah, we do. We we certainly have a lot to talk about with Sundance elsewhere. But uh, East of the Southern Wild was nominated for four Academy Awards. Best Picture, Best Performance uh, for a Lead Actor, uh, Lead Actress, uh, Achievement in Directing, and Adapted Screenplay. No All right, score. Then. Well, it didn't, wow. it, it didn't get the That's, score. That's, that score is it's a great score. Phenomenal. Yeah, then you know, Wendy actually, won't I get did it. like the score for Downhill. <laughs> I, I liked it, it stayed too. with oh, yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it really yeah. stayed with me. I, I actually, I really like the score for The Nest, a movie that you two did that, not like, that but I liked too. it. That's, the, yeah. that's from the guy who, uh, from Arcade yeah. Fire. Well, uh, that does it for this episode of Collider FYC. Once again, make sure you share, make sure you retweet, make sure you tell your friends for not just the video version of Collider FYC, but the audio version as well on iTunes. We have two more 
episodes to go for Collider FYC. Two more for season two. The Oscars are less than two weeks away on February 9th. We are in the home stretch. We are at mile 23, Perry, Marathon Perry, Perry Normal Activity. It's over and done with. This is, no, I'm never going to let, this, we're never going to let this go. Not it's weird until, to think that a year ago was Britney Runs Marathon. I know. That's, that's when it all happened. That's when it all happened, right here at Sundance. What's a marathon? But uh, I think um, this is very, very exciting. And once again, I want to thank our friends and our partners at Arclight Cinemas for being our partner on season two and for our Arclight uh, screening series, Collider FIC screening series. And, uh, you know, follow me on Movie Mance and follow this one at P. Nemiroff. Follow that one at The In Snyder. Let us know what you thought. Comment below. Keep it clean and respectful. And until next time, our second to the last episode of Collider FYC. FY, see you later.